Hi everyone, it's Dasha Dave here and I'm back for another crafty video. Right, today we're going to make some file folders out of file folders. Yeah, I know that sounds bizarre, but I love these file folders, these style, um, that you kind of open up. They've got like a gusset on the side, um, but they're too big for my journaling. So I wanted to make some little ones. So this is my version of it, okay? So this is my little file folder, okay? Um, and it's gusseted on the sides, as you can see, and it's got a little fold at the bottom, and we're going to make one of these, okay? So this is my prototype, and the reason um, it's my prototype is it's not actually glued down, um, but I will glue it down, don't worry. I just was playing to be able to make the right shape, etc., and get the right measurements. So <clears throat> let's make one of those. So I'm, what you what you will need is I'm doing this in centimeters. The reason I'm doing it in centimeters is when you start reducing the size of something down, you need to start, you know, halving numbers. And I'm just not confident with halving and you know fractions of inches and that sort of thing. whereas I can when I get to doing centimetres. Okay, so you're going to need a piece of card that is, let me just get my notes out, just put them to one side. You're going to need a piece of card that is 20 centimetres by 25 centimetres. So as long as you've got, and it needs to be any flimsy card, you don't want it too stiff. In fact, the file folder that they're made from um, is perfect. So it can be this kind of file folder or suspension file folder or, or those ones that just fold over the pieces of like buff colour. But yeah, that's what we need. Okay, so um, you want it to be 20 across and 25 down. So I'll, let's just make sure that we get to this. So I'm just going to make some marks. Um, and hopefully you can see on this paper... Um, I was just playing around. Like I say, I love file folders. I'm a bit obsessed a bit about. Um, they're actually called um, fool's cap document wallets. And then, I, of course, that meant my, my brain had to go and find out what fool's cap meant. Um, and fool's cap was basically a size of paper that was 200 millimeters that way, so 20 centimeters that way, as this is going to be and 330 centimeters sorry not centimeters 330 millimeters that way so or 33 centimeters that way um and it was a standard size paper world round until the invention of a4 so and i don't know why but that was <laughs> that's what i know it's, and the reason why it was called fool's cap is it had a watermark of a fool's cap in the paper to say that it was genuine fool's cap paper. Well, who knew? Well, you do now, but who knew before now? And then, of course, we want it, this to be 25 centimetres this way. Well, it's 25.25 if you want to just get messy with it. So I've been doing 25.2, which is... 252 millimeters so 25.2 because it's very hard to point to a 0.25 of a millimeter um well of a centimeter sorry so we're doing a 0.2 rather than a 0.25 Half a half a millimeter is you're getting into like really nano territory, and it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be that. If you can make it twenty five, then it's twenty five. All it is is you're just going to have a little fraction less of an overlap on this bit here, because that's the long bit that way. Okay, so now that we've got that. What we now need to do is we now need to get scoring. So I'm going to use my big score here because this is the only one that I've got that has 20 that has sorry 
um, centimeters on, and I will use. Oh, uh, there it is. I'll use this now. Um, what you need to do is you need to score at seven on the. So this, remember, this is centimeters. So we're going to call score at seven. So remember, a valley becomes a mountain. So you have to decide which side do I want. Oh, actually, I don't know. Shall I have that on the outside, or is that too garish? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's have this on the outside. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we want to go. Sorry, seven on the first line. I'm going to go score at seven there. And then you want. Um, it's eleven and a half the distance to the next line so that makes it 18 and a half that's accounting for your seven here so you're going to go up to the 18 and a half line and you're going to do another sign for the line there okay so that's that we can take that off and we can just make that score those lines in now okay, remember a valley becomes a mountain so let's me well, let's use that for now I really must find, really must find at some point. Must find it. Oh, maybe not today. Maybe not now. No. No idea where my proper um bone folder is. Oh, it's there. No idea. It's here. So yeah. So I'm just gonna. I, I like using this one. This is a Teflon one. It doesn't leave a, a shiny mark on the bit where you just rubbed over okay so that's going to be the elements basically the basic elements of our foldy bit so the widest one so just so you know i just need to find out which one was the widest one that's like six and a half and that's like seven okay so this this is the shorter one of these two panels fractionally shorter um and that's this bit here okay so that's that bit there okay so that's the bit that we need now need to put these lines into so if you look on the base of these they have a very faint line here front and back and the reason for that is if you can open them up and you can bend that bit in not easily i admit not too easily you can bend that in on that line and they expand with all of your documents in there and so they get nice and big and gussety so that's what we want them to be really is we want that big gusset see there got a box gusset and that's what we want because we want it expandable in our journals but we don't want it to be quite as deep as that so we're going for this now this is when i switched over to my other scoreboard which is now going to elude me no no it doesn't it's here Put these lines in so remember this is the bottom of our folder and because because it's hard to on this on my big score although I've got centimeters we've got a centimeter and we've got a half centimeter but this is a 25 millimeter or a quarter of a centimeter gap and I don't have that on here. I don't have that on the on the big score. So all I did was I used either side of that line. Put, make sure you put your line in one of the grooves. And either side of that line, I just did one of the the markings across. That's the, that's the line that we're on, isn't it? Yeah. And there. And that just gave me my my gusseted fold line and you don't actually have to fold that in and put that into place that's entirely up to you i just did because i liked it you don't you could just leave it if you didn't want it there you just you could just leave it so, so i'm just going to put it in but i'm not going to use it because I'm, I'm going for the authenticity of it all okay so then the next bit is you want to get your scoreboard back out 
and you need to put your lines in either side. So what you're going to create now is you're going to create these little ears to be able to create the side gussets. So what we need is we need to um, score it at so down the sides you want to score it at half a centimeter here all the way down the all the way down there and then at a centimeter all the way down and then flip it round and then half a centimeter and a centimeter <clears throat> so then we're going to fold that over so this is going to be the inside remember fold that over and then fold it back and i'll realize that we've our valley is going to become a valley on this one on this bit but don't worry about that we're only doing it once there and we're just going to go around and do the same on the other side fold it over fold it back on itself I'm not sure these are these style of uh, document wallets are very common in the UK. I don't know how how used they are around the world, but they're definitely very common in the UK. Sorry, I'm just scoring in those lines, just reinforcing those lines. There we go. Okay, so we've basically made our essentially we've made our shape, but as you can see, we've got too many gussets going on all over the place. So. What I did then was I just pressed it all out. Okay, and then I held it, so I folded it, folded these sides out, and then I folded it over on itself, and then I get a pair of scissors. I'm using a pair of small scissors, I'm using Tim Holtz ones. You don't have to, there's no, no there's no rhyme or reason to use using it. And what I did was I just snipped a little way up, okay, and then just off and there's no there is no measurement for this so you're just making a straight line up you just need to cut off that little your score line so cut your score line off yeah and then you do the same on the other side so a little bit up if you I mean you can put that back on this side if you want to get it exactly the same but it really does not matter a little score line up and then sorry a little cut line up and then then angled off to cut that bit off okay and then what you need to do is you need to do a very similar thing on this bit okay but all you're going to do is you're going to cut from a little way down here and up to that fold line so you're just going to snip that bit off yeah I'm just going to do that again on the other side up and snip it off Okay, so then you've got the, these are your gusset folds here. Okay, so like that. Okay, but as you'll see on this, the gusset is a double gusset here, uh, sorry, a double fold score here and only a single one here. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to cut this bit off, but we'll do that in a moment. What we want to now do is we want to fold that over and then cut the back panel off up to that score line yeah and do the same on this side harder to do on this side because you're holding it and I'm trying to hold it so you can see what I'm doing so you hold it better than than me for that and then what you want to do is you want to cut this entire section off this folded bit off you can use a pair of scissors or you can just use a blade if you're not confident using a blade please don't use a blade ow <laughs> he says not confident as soon as i say not confident i always seem to stab myself um yeah so you want to just be careful <laughs> not like me do as i say not as i do okay so take that bit off and then do the same on this side remember you're only cutting down to this 
to the cut line. give it another score there we go okay so that's that so you've essentially made almost made the folder now all you need to do is you just need to cut this extra so on this bottom panel which will become the front you just need to cut that panel that little extra panel off okay so probably better if we used a bigger pair of scissors Dave and then you get a much straighter line. The reason why you want a straight line is you just don't want it to hang out too much. When it when it tucks in, you don't want it to hang out because it'll just all the paper will jar on it. Okay. Do the same on this. Let's go on this side. There we go. That's it. So now all we need to do is that bit will fold in, and this tab. We'll stick to that, fold it in, and, that, and like I say, if you're going to fold those bits in and these tabs are going to stick to that, okay? So, uh, let me show you on this one because you, it's probably easier for you to see on the camera. So you've got this fold, this, these bits that are going to fold in, and these bits are your double gusset, okay? And what you're going to do is... You're going to fold it and then stick those two together so you took that one in and that one is pointing out and you're going to put some glue on this surface and it will stick to this surface okay so let's do that oh let's do that in a minute let's do it on on this one and we'll do it again on that one and the reason why i want to wait is because i want to just age that up a bit as you can tell i've aged this one up a bit so I found it easier to put the glue on that panel. Then fold it together. Do one side at a time. Fold it together. And then just press it. And then just hold it or use a, you know, a clip or something like that to hold it in place. And do the same on that side. Fold it together. Press it in. Hold it in place. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that to kind of just glue down. I'm going to do the same on this in a moment, but what we'll do is we'll age this. Now, oh, I've put the, you know what? I've done that wrong, haven't I? Has nobody, to, nobody told me, did they? I've put the double gusset in the wrong, in, I've put, sorry, I've put the, the fold bit in the wrong bit. This is the double, uh, the double gusset bit. Never mind. It's all right. Every every disaster can be recovered. So we're just going to have it that way around instead. <laughs> we're going to have a double gusset on that end and not on this bit. Oh well, never mind. Um, so like I say, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not too worried. What I will do is I will put that extra gusset line in that bottom bit. That's what happens when you don't pay attention, Dave. And you get all giddy and you get running off on your own, unsupervised. You should never leave me unsupervised. I'm a bit like a gremlin, don't leave me unsupervised. Um, so there you go, we'll just put that, that gusset in there as well. So I've got, I've got a double double gusset going on here now. Why have one gusset when you can have two? Well, I, I know some people have a bit of a, a problem with the word gusset, but. Apologies if you do. Doesn't bother me really. It's just it's a it's a factual thing. Okay, so I'll just put that into place and then I'm just gonna fold it back out again now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is because this is the top flap, I'm just going to round these corners. So I'll get my corner rounder, which I believe is there. Pick the right corner. Pop it in there and round that corner off. And do the same again on the other side. If you don't have a corner rounder, you can just snip it off with a pair of scissors. Or you can leave it, in fact, you can leave it square. It's entirely up to you. I just like the, the corners rounded. 
And now I'm just going to age it. So I think I'm going to use some vintage photo. Well, I say I think, I, I definitely am. I've just picked it up. So I'm just going to go across all the edges that would, in the course of general use, get a bit of wear and tear on them. That includes all of our extra gusset lines, including the ones that I put in that were by mistake, the ones the, at the top, never mind. If you look, if you do, actually, to be fair, if you look at the top, there are multiple lines on the top, and that's to allow it to expand with the items in, so it's not inaccurate. It's just not the way I planned it, but never mind. Remember, you know, these are happy accidents. These are things that just happened to us. We didn't plan them, but, you know, we roll with them because we're artists, and that's what we do. So don't, don't worry overly about the things that you, you get wrong. Everything can be resolved. It's not really wrong. It's just not the way it planned. You planned it, so... All of all of these nice edges, nice and well, that's what I, I want anyway. You can have, you can do what you like. So but I like my, my edges to be a little bit grubby looking, bit grubby. Okay, and I'm just going to make the inside as well a little bit less garish. It's quite garish, isn't it? It's yellow. But I think it's I don't know whether it's the yellow or whether it's the combination of the yellow and the white together make it very. Ah! <laughs> Not going to see it all, so you don't have to worry about like real, like inside ink where you, ink where you want to. I would just don't wouldn't waste a lot of time on these panels. You're not really going to see them, so because they're going to be on the inside. So okay, so we've got it a bit grungier looking. Let's go over it a little bit on the outside as well. Um, and if you look at that other one, this one's got a lot of markings on it. And all I did was I just used some of my homemade texture stamps to add a bit of interest to them. So you could do the same. So let's maybe put use this one, which is one of my texture stamps, and maybe do it in what colour should we have? Can we go for let's go for green on this one? And uh, that's going to be our upper flap. So maybe we have there. Which I'm, I'm just making a, a mess. No, I'm just making not a mess. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just having fun. That's what I'm doing. Um, and what else shall we use? What other, what other textures we got in here? I remember I make these out of all the my wombly bits that I find. There's another wavy one. Uh, this one's quite like this one for giving a bit of a theme. I know this is yellow. It's weird because it's it looks green on here, but it is it is yellow. And the reason I like using this is on yellow is it just gives it a, a bit of a alternate shade. It looks like it's got dirty in patches. And this, I, I know some people have asked me before where I got all of these patterns and things from. They, this is literally the bottom out of a fruit, fresh fruit, the thing that soaks up all of the extra, extra juices and stuff. It's just one of them. So, I see textures everywhere and I think, oh, I need, I need to use the hat, I'm going to use that and do that with the hat. And remember, no rhyme or reason, just do it. Do what, what tickles your fancy. OK, 
Okay, so put them back in there. Great thing about your own stamps is you don't feel bad about not cleaning them. I mean, let's face it, I don't, I don't actually feel bad about not cleaning the other stamps, but you know, sometimes I get them out in front of people and I think, oh, mm, mm, maybe I should have cleaned it, but never mind. Just remember, I'm going to put the glue on this bit here because I found that easier. Well, I would. I can get it out. Come on, glue. Oh, there we go. I knew that would happen. It would either like not come out or come out in a Niagara Falls style. Oh, there we go. More Niagara Falls. Right. Oh. It. Use a glue spreader if you prefer, but I like I like to be finger involved. Just don't get my new top on it because this is one of the tops that Brian brought me for Christmas. So it's a new my new hoodie. It's got a nice motivational s saying on the front. Can't actually remember what it is. I think step into a brave new world. I think it says, but don't quote me. H&M if you want to know. <laughs> you might not want to know, so. But I've told you anyway, so. There we go. That's that. Get that off there because I don't want to put my elbow in that. There we go. So we've got this little file folder. wonky for some reason oh, for some reason I've completely bashed it now because it was wonky try and correct its wonkiness a little there we go there we go and we've made our little file folder so yeah, so there you go. You can make your own little file folder document wallet type thing. Um, you know, you can stick th you could stick them into a journal and have them, you know, as a as an extra bit. The other good thing about these is this is how a lot of people will keep them closed is they'll tuck them into themselves. So like the big versions, they just tuck into themselves. So this one's not going to play, is it? Something like that, so they tuck into themselves. Or you can just have them, you know, you could put a fastening on it, or you could have it so that it's stuck to a page and it opens out, whatever you, whatever you like. You could stick a few together, you could have them back to back. But there you go. So they are miniature document wallets. So, um, and literally all I did, being very honest with you, all I did was I just took one of these apart so I will I couldn't find a template anywhere so I just took one of these apart and then measured it and um, made a scale of it so there we go that's uh, just a, a little quick have a play and you know see what you can do with it so I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I hope you'll join me for another video. Um, so remember, um, my name is Dash of Dave and I love you all, without exception, until you give me a reason not to. So don't give me a reason not to. That's the key. Don't give me a reason not to. So thank you to everybody that has supported me so far. Thank you for everybody that comments, that anybody that wishes me well um i'm sorry about my last video uh where the sound was playing up i didn't know until i had uploaded it that the sound was so bad um however my microphone has been playing up so i'm hoping that this is recorded properly so hopefully you can hear me this time and i will see you all in the next video when you all can also hear me again so don't forget you can buy me a coffee you can go onto my Etsy store and go and buy some of my digitals. 
um, or you can just comment, say hello, um, and I will reply as soon as I possibly can. All right, folks, you all take care, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, folks. Love to you all. Bye. Bye. Lots of, lots and lots and lots and lots of kisses. Bye, big hugs. Brr.